Welcome to the Spurs 9501 podcast. From Kane to the lane, the final say on all things Tottenham. Here are your hosts, Steve, Ray, Cam and Jam. Welcome everybody back to the Spurs 9501 podcast. This is Ray in London. Welcome back to all our YouTube viewers and our podcast listeners. I've got Terry from Vermont Spurs with me here. Hi, Terry. I've got Jam in Connecticut and I've got Cam in Florida. Unfortunately, Steve couldn't make it today, but we've got a really good um, expert in Terry from Vermont with us today. So we're here to give you our post-match analysis on the 2-0 win over Dinamo Zagreb in the uh, last 16 of the Europa League. Um, Before we start, let me just go through the Spurs team for you. And it's uh, Hugo Lloris in goal, Serge Aurier right back, Eric Dyer Sanchez in the centre-back and Ben Davis at left-back. We've got Sissoko and Ndombele in the central of midfield. We've got Lamella, Ali and Son as a three. And we've got Harry Kane up front. So that was our starting lineup. Um, we'll talk about the starting lineup as well. Let me go now to Cam for some match stats. Cam, over to you. Hello, everyone. I um, just want to say uh, another good result, but I'm sure we're going to be talking about that. Uh, second time we played Dinamo Zagreb and um, the second time we've beaten them. Uh, I don't believe a Croatian team in any of the cups so far has won on English soil. So uh, that's an, that should be an interesting discussion point, I'm sure, with our yeah. uh, Croatian uh, listeners and fans. As for the match itself, I think it was uh, punctuated by a number of things. And one is, and I think which you sh- we should all, we will, I'm sure, talk about, is that Dinamo Zagreb committed 20 fouls as opposed to Tottenham 10. Um, we both got three yellow cards each, which I was surprised that I thought there should have been a... Um, this all seemed to have come in in the last 10 minutes, which led to a very scrappy end to the game. Um, corner kicks, they had one, we had six. And um, in terms of shots on goal, they actually had two shots on goal, even though they were pretty weak. Um, and I think we, we actually didn't have that many. We had about uh, five shots on goal. Uh, just to add, Dinamo Zagreb have not lost a game until today uh, in this season in the Europa League. They were only conceded one goal before today, so they... <laughs> We did two, and we're coming off a um, four-game uh, winning streak. So this is our fifth win in a row. Excellent. That's very good, Cam. Thank you for those stats. I'm surprised that Dinamo Zagreb have no Croatian team have ever won in England. That's unbelievable. That is, seeing as they've got such that. a good national team, yes, yeah, just says, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that says really. But let's come to Terry first. Terry, I just want to get your thoughts on the lineup. Um, Obviously, you know, not our strongest lineup because Bale and Toby and Pierre weren't playing. So, do you think, um, what do you think there was behind that lineup? Was it more waiting for the North London derby, saving these guys? I think there was probably a little bit of that. Um, you know, like, like Marino was saying, uh, whatever team went out, you know, to start the game was going to be a strong team. I think it was. Um, I wasn't too, too surprised with it, really. Um, you know, uh, I thought it was a lineup that, um, respected Zagreb, you know, as it should have, you know, they're a strong opponent. Um, I, uh, for me, you know, I, 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 I wish uh, Tanganga was getting a little more playing time. I, I was hoping that maybe we'd see him today. Um, maybe we'll see him in the next leg. Um, but um, I, I thought the lineup was, was great. Yeah. Okay, good. It's the right lineup. Excellent. Um, let me come to Jam now. Jam, give us your thoughts on the first half and uh, how things, you know, evolved. I mean, the first few minutes, uh, Zagreb had uh, some decent chances, I think. You know, they were through on goal. So give us your thoughts on that. Um, so uh, the first half for me, I was I was in and out because I was uh, getting back home and I uh, missed uh, maybe like 10 minutes and a half there. Uh, but it was, it was uh, as far as the lineup goes, I was happy with the lineup that we played. Um, it was good to have... You know, I, I was Kane was probably my biggest concern about starting, uh, but I'm glad he did in the end. Um, and the first half, we it was it was tentative. You know, I don't think we were flying at them. Um, we were respecting them, and I think uh, Dynamo were playing very very good defensive, compact football. You know, um, yeah. every time we we attacked, we weren't we weren't fast enough. I don't think I don't think we really were fast enough until that three man substitution in the second half kind of picked up some pace, and then yep. Last ten minutes were very slow, but we'll we'll get on to the second half. Uh, like I said, I didn't. I missed. I missed. Uh, I feel like important parts in the first half, so I don't have that much to say, unfortunately. Okay. Cam, do you want to give us your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I mean, just going back to uh, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, they played a four-one-four-one, 
which is an interesting. interesting. Uh, I thought they'd league. only played a four 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 two. That's right, something <laughs> like that. But they played a four one four one. Uh, where well, they had uh, Ademi at number five in the centre holding of, of midfield, a four sort of like uh, um, Ivanusic and Jakic and Maya and Orsic up front behind Petkovic. Now, when I looked at them, they looked to me like they were playing a back five because it looked like Ademi was dropping back into the back five, and it looked like the other four, well, at least the um, Ivanusic and Jakic were moving back. So they were always playing a back seven, which gave. I agree, a, Cam. I thought yeah. that they gave uh, um, the midfield. They just handed it over to us. I mean, we yeah, were exactly very, very comfortable in midfield. Probably more comfortable than we've ever been in any Premiership game, and I really couldn't understand what 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 they were doing. A lot of uh, pressure was put on their goalkeeper, uh, Livakovic, and a lot of our Croatian fans that have been listening to us have been telling us what a great goalkeeper he is. I thought he flapped a bit. I thought his punching of the ball when he didn't need to. I thought he did. Uh, um, he came out to get the ball, didn't get it as well as he did. He didn't look as assured or as comfortable um, uh, in in defence as he did. I'd like to hear from some of our our Croatian fans, and particularly a shout out to um, Zutu Limon, who called me a joke. So I hope the joke's on him today because we beat them two one, two zero. <laughs> and uh, uh, Rio Babic, um, Jama, and Hegel zero zero, as well as. Uh, the realist, who, to be fair, did say that uh, Tottenham are on fire right now and they'll ha- they'll have a tough game. What really hit me about the first half was that Dinamo didn't really look like they wanted to do anything. That they really wanted to score. When they did get into our half, uh, when we've got probably two of our weakest back back defenders with them, um, Sanchez and Dyer, and Dyer was well, I didn't think was particularly very good. He made a couple of horrible fouls. and um, But they never took advantage. And I thought Petkovic, who was supposed to be this great striker, really didn't didn't really put any of our defenders under pressure. We never looked under pressure at any stage in the 90 minutes, let alone the first half. Well, Petkovic was so good that they took him I off. Thought, I thought yes, Petkovic I'll... did well uh, in a few attacks, though, in the second half. There was a few... He's got a good, good dribbling ability, good passing ability, and there, were, there was a couple of moments that got stamped out well that, that were coming from him. I noticed that in the okay. second half. I mean, we've got to put everything in context. This was really a second-string team for Tottenham, second-string back quarterbacks, you know. So I called a quarterback, sorry, centre-backs. I'm thinking of American here. But, um, you know, I've, I was a bit surprised, like Cam said, that Dinamo didn't come more at us, put us under mm. pressure and actually go for it, you know, because it, all they needed was an away goal and then it's all up in the air then. Okay. It's really, yeah, yeah. So, so the fact that, you know, as Cam said and Terry said, it was just like defence and we were just attacking. Very surprising for me. So let's talk about the first goal, Terry. A great run by Eric Lamella. And I'll come to you later in the show to talk more about Lamella. But tell us about the, the goal and how it evolved and what you liked about it. Well, um, you know, I, I, prior to, to Lamella's run, which I thought was fantastic, um, I, I think his shot that he got off was not an easy one. Um, he was under a lot of pressure. The angle was tight, uh, and he still managed to get a good shot off. Uh, but prior to all that, I really liked the uh, the team build-up play. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, Jim, maybe you were saying earlier you weren't too impressed with, with Delhi, but uh, – you know, I, I thought he had a pretty decent game, and he was involved in, in that build-up play a couple of touches before uh, Lamella made his run. Um, you know, it was fantastic. <clears throat> and once he came off the post to to Kane, you know, everybody knew, you know, that was that was going in the back of the net. It was it was a sitter just to tap in, really. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think most of the credit of that first goal has got to go to the individual effort of Lamella. Um, because he just, you know, everybody saw it, you know, driving with the ball, being really direct, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, creating that chance that ended up with the goal, I think uh, is, is um, his, his, his effort has to be uh, rewarded there. I think it was boiled down to him. Yeah, I mean, I think Eric Lamella in the last few games has played really well. Mm-hmm. been really Agreed. impressed by him, actually. Yeah, very impressed form. by his tackling and his forward play as well. He's making runs. This is the Amelic, This is the Eric Lamella we thought we bought eight years ago from yeah. Roma. You know, this is the one. It, now, yeah. yeah is, so, is, is this the time where I can talk about my 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 favorite play of the game? No, no, we we'll go to that later. Though. We're going to talk about that, Terry. But you're okay. going to get your chance. Don't worry. Okay, guys. So, um, we got one. We went into the um, one nil jam. Did we actually have any scares? Did um. 
Did Dinamo Zagreb? Did they we actually had, give they us two shots, right? concern? Did Lloris have a save to make at all? Other there, than was, that there was one from outside the box, I think, which wasn't yeah. too difficult. And then they had another shot at some point, but that I can't really remember. Um, mm. Yeah, they, like I said, the stats, what, they had two shots on target? Yeah. Soft I shots. Mean, um, soft shots. Yeah, but, nothing, nothing to bother the keeper. Yeah. But if this is the strongest team in Croatia, you know, the one the title like 15 years or whatever... This is. I was very surprised, as I said, Cam, that they didn't go for it. Why would you think that is? Were they did they, were they did give too much respect to Tottenham? I think they did because I, th- I felt that the they they handed over the midfield. I mean, one of we, we, Lamella had a great game, but he had so much space to run around in. Did you notice how much space there was between the centre circle and <laughs> and 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 their uh, penalty area? It was almost like they'd just given us the freedom of their of the of the, all that space in which to with time on the ball. I mean, we're not used to seeing that much time on the ball in the Premiership because it's so fast and furious. But here they gave a lot of time on the ball. I thought that they were very, they looked very compact defensively and it seemed like a team that, that is very used to defending deep and defending very well. And, you know, apart from those two goals, we should have taken that, the amount of possession we had. I think we ended up with 68%. Uh, we should have made more of it, to be honest with you. Overall, I thought we were. We I thought it was a disappointing first half, given the fact that um, Dinamo Zagreb had just basically handed the game over to Tottenham and said, "Hey, go for it. See what you can yeah. do." Very surprising. Very surprising about that. Surprising about that. I have something to say about that uh, midfield battle. Um, I feel that a lot of it came down to Ndombele holding the ball so well. Like every time they did try and take the ball back in the midfield battle, he would wriggle off three or four people and you know spread the ball out um which i can imagine being very frustrating would probably a big reason why they didn't you know counter as often as they sh- they probably tried to well i think we should talk about that penalty that was not yeah, I, was oh about that. I was going to yes. come to that penalty i was going to come to that penalty let's start with the you uh jam did you think that was a penalty or not oh absolutely you, you could see it in on in Dombele's face like <laughs> it was it was the best you know I want a still frame of that it was a great it was a great facial expression and and it was a clear penalty so what's var playing at terry i mean everybody can see he pushes it through his legs he gets caught why is that not a penalty try and put my tell me what the var person thought about that that they didn't give a penalty terry if, you know if if i had the answer to that I, I, I think I'd, I'd be in bigger places than, than, than here. I mean, you know, I, I don't get it. A, a lot of times I don't. I, I think I think maybe what's happening, what we're seeing in, in football, you know, uh, at least European football across the different leagues, is um, a, a shift maybe back towards uh, the discretion of the referee uh, with and play on the field, where e- even in the beginning of this season – uh, I think we were seeing more uh, faith in the technology, and we saw that that was coming up with some really cockamamie calls. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, you know, I, I'm kind of okay with uh, with with more discretion being given towards the referee on the field. Um, because it just lends itself to the natural flow of the game that we all grew up loving anyways. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, right now we can go back to that. Look, look at the rerun, you know, and, 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 and argue over it. We're all gonna, you know, but to do that in the middle of when the clock's running on the game, it just doesn't feel good to me. So, you know, um, even though I'm not 100% convinced that it should have been a penalty, first of all, I'm just I'm just not. And and being that it was as tight as it was for me, I'd rather I'd rather see the the, the discretion go to the to, to the ref on the field. To be honest with you, like we just kind of keep okay, it. Okay, so follow, just hold on, Cam. Just, so following on from that, Terry, why didn't the referee go to the side and have a look on the monitor to have a look? Why didn't the VAR tell him to go and have a look at it? Because there could be a potential penalty there. You know, I, I don't know the protocols. You know, I, I'm not sure what the protocols say that w- where he has to follow. It's However, nice. I'm fairly certain that he has a discretion of whether or not he feels he needs to or wants to. Um, yep. And 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 um, I think the, the 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 referee on the field has the authority to make that decision, and the ref at that time chose not to. Sure. Okay, let's not spend too much time on the penalty. Whether it is or not, it doesn't matter. We won 2-0. Cam, talk us through the second goal, and then I'm going to come to um, 
then I'm going to come to Jam to talk about some more players, etc. Talk us through the second goal, Cam. Well, but I do want to say one thing about the penalty. Go I've on, never go ahead. seen a more stone-cold penalty in my life. Yeah. I mean, the fact is that the way that the... Um, I would like to know from our, our Dinamo fans whether if it was the other way around, wouldn't they be screaming blue murder? Yeah, um, exactly. If it had been the other way around, I mean... Uh, uh, I mean, you can also ask them whether they think it was a penalty or not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, like to hear the that. guy put his foot on his foot and chopped yeah. him. I mean, you know, well, he never touched the ball. It wasn't yeah, even exactly. like, you know, well, did he get the ball or did he get the leg? Maybe it's a bit of both, you know. Fair enough, he never touched the ball. Anyway, I think the protocols are different in in the Europa League and they yeah. only just brought it in for this round. So clearly the referee didn't know what he was doing or no, didn't know what they were doing. Um, very Look different. us through the second goal, Cam. With the second goal, well, I mean, the, the our great their great player from Martinique, I believe he is, uh, Theophil Katerine. Um, is he actually uh, Croatian national, or is he? Is he not? I think he's a he's a, he's a Martin, from Martinique, from oh, what Martinique, I can see. Okay. Yeah. But what I I mean, I, what a horror show for him! I mean, what was he doing? I mean, it's unfortunate. You you, uh, you passed the ball as he did. I think we'd lost it. The ball came in. I think is it Bell that passed it, missed it. Uh, Bell went, crossed uh, it in. Crossed it. Went to the kid, went to uh, Catherine. Search. So, so yeah, no, Bell right, crossed it across, so, and then Aria yeah. crossed it back. Catherine in. Yeah. hit it. Yep. Passed it to. Uh, uh, Harry Kane and I thought Harry Kane had fluffed his lines by then. Yeah. Because he sort of held it, looked at it, looked at the player, sort of looked up at him and said, "What are you doing? <laughs> Passing me the ball?" And then put it through his legs. Uh, so it does, was a fantastic finish. Does um, Theophil Catherine get an assist for that then in the record book? <laughs> I was wondering if if Serge is going to get an assist. I, mean, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't but, think so. I mean, I think the keeper should have could have done a bit better. I know yeah, it came through the legs. The keeper, did he? Yeah. he did. Uh, you you can't see through a player, I mean, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, he's, a, he's, he's Croatia's number one. He's an international goalie. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Harry Kane on the ball. Most of our players receive that ball in, in a shock, shock situation and are like, oh, what do I do? They would have probably fluffed their lines. Harry Kane composed himself, held the ball, <laughs> placed it nicely through the through the defender's feet, who and the keeper can't see, you know, that coming. Oh, it was yeah. a great, great take by. Uh, it was a gr- very good take yeah. by Kane. But Jam. Harry Kane's got this special knack of playing it through players' legs, hasn't he? So the that's keeper, his, that's the thing. thing. The that's keeper, a great it, thing that yeah, he always does that. I don't know how he does that. He hits the it. ball in such a way that it's just yeah. like flat and, yeah. and powerful. He's, it's he's got fantastic. a quick, quick, quick release with his yeah, shot. I, I think he's got one of the best shots in the world. He's one of the best shooters in the world for me. Yep, I totally agree. Okay, let's move on now. Um, Cam, I want you to, because we got a lot of stick previously because we didn't do enough analysis on the Croatian players, give, them, give enough credit, etc. So Ooh. can you give us, seeing as you're a resident Croatian expert, can you, can you give us your thoughts on the different players that they had? Sorry, my apologies for that laugh. Well, I mean, I thought that we were all looked at the goalkeeper, Livakovic, and thought he would do a great job. I thought Lauritsen, who was their um, Danish defender in uh, at the back, uh, who's um, who I think played for Arsenal for a while and or was it with Arsenal for a while and was very anti Tottenham. Got the run around by most of our players, and I think the best he could do was get himself a yellow card. Uh, I didn't think he had a very particularly good game. We already talked about Katarine. I thought that the uh, uh, left back and the right back did pretty well. Um, and and Amy, who was the, um, the number five, who, who, who for a I start did hold back. Did did help break up a lot of the play, and when he fell back in with the, with the with the back five, I mean up front, Petkovic was very isolated. I think when he did get the ball, he really really was at a loss because the players were not running off him. There was what I what I found very surprising was there was there was no zero high press from uh, uh, Dynamo Zagreb. So whether they don't believe in pressing up high or pressing anywhere is um is a different style of football for the modern football. I saw no pressing, even when we had the ball close to their uh, penalty area. Um, and secondly, very few of their players, but specifically the um, Osic and Maya, didn't look like they were doing enough running to, yeah. to back up uh, gonna... Petkovic. They just weren't running with him to give him, you know, to give some support. So when they did have a chance to break, they seemed to hold back a lot rather than take that opportunity. And I think if they'd run at uh, Dyer and at Sanchez, they probably might have had a few better chances than they did, but they just didn't take, seem to want to take those chances because they were too scared of losing the ball and then being caught out. Then there, there was one big chance they had, I forgot, um, I wanted to talk about that. On the 59th minute, Maya went straight through on goal, had a really good opportunity, maybe could have taken his time and, and completely fluffed his lines, shot it way wide. And, um, mm. you know, there was that was a, that was a 1-0. The game could have changed drastically with that. Um, 
you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was from the Dynamo players. They probably could have uh, showed up a little more, unfortunately. We'll yeah, see it was wide to the left, right, Cam? Or Jim? Yep, yep, wide to the left. Yeah, terrible right. shot. Yeah, that's well, a great, great positioning, though. They gave too and much it was respect one of the best chances. Yeah. They gave bit. too much respect to Tottenham, I think. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, they didn't go for it. I have to say, it wasn't as bad as Bergwijn shot when he shot up, when he had a chance outside the area and he shot so high that it probably hit the top of the uh, uh, <laughs> the last tier. Okay, let's move on now. I'm going to come to, I just want to do some uh, a player analysis. So I'm going to come to Terry first. Terry, talk us about Eric Lamella and how his good form has continued. Tell us what you thought of his yeah. performance today. Yeah, well, you know, um, he's been in great form. Um, the last couple of games, I've, you know, when when he's been out on the field for us, I thought, you know, finally those worries of him being so injury prone are behind us. You know, um, he doesn't play like he's an injury prone player anymore. Um, that might have to do with, um, you know, the depth, you know, that we now have. Um, but, uh, you know, his, his work rate is phenomenal. You know, his his ability to manipulate the ball uh, through traffic is is a tactical asset for us. Um, and, you know, he's got vision, too. And and we see that with with uh, his passing ability. Um, now, this gets me to to my favorite play of the game for sure. It was it was his defensive run. I, I just I just loved it. You know, it, uh, in the first half, I don't know, maybe half about halfway through the first half, somewhere around the 25th minute, maybe um, he, he, we lose possession and Lamella's streaking back in a defensive recovery run out mm -hmm. towards the sideline, uh, makes this great sliding mm -hmm. tackle, wins possession and starts transition. And we're on the attack again. I mean, the goals were great. The wind was great. Yes. Um, and so was that play. That was absolutely fantastic. It just showed grit. It showed hustle. Um, and and um, you know I, I can't I can't say enough uh, good things about that one play in Lamella lately. And I just hope his his form you know um, you know keeps up because what it's doing is it is it's giving us um, choices you know giving the manager choices on who to start and and, and when to sub. Um, so I think it's it's uh, helping create that feel of um, a positive you know team effort. I think. I think what, when you when you when you're listening to the player interviews, you know, from between games, um, the camaraderie is, is coming out a lot. You're hearing a lot of positive things uh, about, you know, just the the attitude in the dressing room, that kind of thing. And uh, I think Lamella is right at the center of all that. Um, just a quick one for you, Terry. Thanks for that. That's really good analysis. Do you think maybe that? Bale starting the last few games has brought the best out of Lamella real. Do you think there's any relation between that? Because Lamella's game is really up since Bale's been playing regularly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yes. So yes, but to, to what extent? It's hard to say. Um, okay. You know, there, there's that saying where, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. And I think that's what's going on now. You know, um, you get that, 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 like I said, camaraderie. Uh, the team spirit, you know, the confidence is up and um, you can see guys are congratulating each other a lot, you know? Um, so, so yeah, but to, to what extent, I don't know. Is it maybe more of a, of a overall team uh, effort that, that, that is raising Lamella's game? Maybe. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Jam, let me come to you now. Um, Serge Aurier returned to the team after a few matches I personally thought he had a good game, played really well. Give us your thoughts about Serge's performance. Oh, we've lost your audio, Jam. We can't hear you. Excuse me, I muted myself there. But uh, it's really nice to have him back on the right wing there, um, on the right wing back. Um, you know, he brings so much more that Doherty does not bring um, in terms of overlapping, in terms of uh, crossing ability, in terms of actual pace on the wing. Um, it's nice seeing him and uh, who, who was out there on the right today? Uh, Bale, him and Bale overlapping playing intertwining right. yep. and it's not just aria i always like to I like, I like that little french connection we've got going on today with sissoko and Ndombele, Ndombele. i think they work well together when they do play together um and it's it's a nice change to it's a nice option to have um i think it's very important to have aria back in our team uh starting he's he's our he's our best right back and uh yeah. the improvement he's made in the last season and a half has been phenomenal 
you know, maybe it's because there's other players to to look at now in terms of um, mistakes. But his mistake making has has gone. His general decision making in a game has gone improved vastly, and and for the whole team, morale morale is up. Um, everyone's playing well. Everyone's hitting form, and it's it's so much better than it was. You know, two months ago, when we went through those. They, and during the match here, the commentators listed off all those matches that we lost, starting with Liverpool, then Chelsea, Brighton. It was so sad to hear, but. It's it's good that the team is looking more confident, and um, you know it comes down to Mourinho has to. I say, it's not just it's not just Bale, it's not just Lamella, it's Lucas, it's um, even Dyer. Even Dyer played well today. I mean, he didn't have anything to do, but he wasn't being, you know, dumb Dyer. Okay, I mean, one thing that I think goes just my comments on Aurier, one thing that goes unnoticed is his heading ability is really good. I don't think people enough people talk about it. He's got a good leap on him and he gets a good you know, gets good headers in as well. So I think that's really good as well. But yeah, it's good to have him back as well. He adds an attacking sense and his crossing was really good. Cam, I mean you've had your a good talk about the your favourite Croatian players. Uh, who stood out for you from the Spurs side today? Who did you want to talk about today, Cam? I mean, I think that we were going to talk a bit about Delhi. Did he do enough oh, to get Alli, yeah. the team? Yeah. Did he do Tell enough? Us about Delhi Ali. I'm not really sure. I mean, the, the, I think the problem here was today. I mean, we we'll talk about we talked about Lamella. We talked about all the other players, but the freedom they got in that midfield, thanks to Anomaly, which he did hold up that play very, very well. I thought he probably one of the best games he's had in a long time. Um, him and Sissoko played very well together, and that should have given Delhi a lot more freedom to play that. Um, that 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 fourth nine position and Kane had dropped back so many times during that match where he took players out um, and I thought Delhi was slow to take up that number nine position. He was very very slow to run into that space and even the commentators were saying, "Run into that space, run into that space." He, and I didn't think he was at the pace of the game. Um, maybe it's because he's not fit yet. But I mean, we've got to understand what is his role in the team when Kane does what he does, which is what he did very effectively today, which is drop off, hold up a few players, take on a couple of players, either get a free kick or spread the ball wide to Son, which he did on many occasions, right? If if Kane is spreading the ball to Son wide and then Son is pulling in the crosses and on the other side, Aurier is pulling in the crosses, if Delhi's not running through the middle and taking up that false nine position, then there's no one to cross it to. And I think that he played that role very ineffectively today and i think that's something that he needs to work on okay excellent good stuff guys really good discussion there let's go to the takeaways now before we come to some predictions terry let's come to you first what's your main takeaway from the match today well uh that we have depth <clears throat> um and um <clears throat> I, it, uh, another thing i think we should um hoiberg so we we lost him so so that, yes, that's lost him that, for the next, yeah. yeah we lost good him point. Yeah, um, I mean, do I think that's going to be an issue? No. Um, do I do I think he knew if he got a yellow card, he'd miss the, the next game? Yes, he did. Did he give an intentional yellow card? Yep, he did. So, you know, I don't think that's a big concern, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um, I yeah, think okay. Mourinho's got history in that in that area, so that's fine. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. So your main takeaway from the from the game, Terry. Ah. Uh, that you know, um, Zagreb's a great team. They're very strong in Croatia, but um, you know they they just were they were outgunned today by by a better team. And um, you know I, I'm going to say Tottenham goes through. Okay, great. Jam, your main takeaway from the match? Uh, main takeaway, I think Lucas Lucas Moura is our number one uh, for that number ten position. When he came on, he made such a difference, and he plays that role the way we want Deli Ali to play it. But he's he's not the same player, you know. Deli Ali is an attacking midfielder, whereas Lucas Moura is a striker who can play at false nine. Um, so you think Lucas starts in the North London derby? Then uh, Lucas definitely starts. Lucas is is uh, one of the first names on the team sheet right now. Okay, great. Cam, main takeaway. My main takeaway is is two nil enough. I mean, I thought we should have uh, uh, taken an, but I do not believe that Zagreb will play like they did at home. I believe that they. I don't know if Croatia has fans allowed into the stadium. I know that in Kiev they had a hell of a lot of fans in the stadium when they were playing Villarreal, even though they lost two nil. Um, but uh, it will make a difference. They cannot play as badly. They will go on the front foot. And uh, if we don't defend effectively, we could get overrun. And I thought that a 3-0 would have been a lot better for us. 
But, you know, better than 1-0, I suppose. They didn't get an away goal. That's the main thing. So we do go in with an advantage. Uh, the main takeaway for me is that we, uh, I thought Bale's uh, had a nice little cameo and should be fully fit for the North London derby. A bit worried about Harry Kane's knee, as we all saw some ice going on it. But I'm very happy that Regulon didn't play a part and I see him bombing up and down uh, on that left side uh, uh, um, against Arsenal. And I thought, uh, with the 2-0, one eye has got to be on the North London derby um, and having our, putting our best foot forward and keeping all our players fit. OK, thanks for that. My main takeaway, again, uh, to, the main takeaway for me is we kept a clean sheet because if they'd got an away goal, that would have been a real issue. Oh, but yeah. keeping a clean sheet means we only need to score one and we've got enough firepower to score one that that means they're going to lead, what, four goals to beat mm -hmm. us? So I think that was really key for me. And I was really worried towards the end where they had a few free kicks and all that. If they just nicked a lucky goal, that could be big problems. But that's my main takeaway. You know, we, we kept a clean sheet and that should see us through. Um, before we finish, I just want to get your predictions for the North London derby. And just to, to let all our fans, YouTube fans know, we'll be doing our watch along on the, on the Sunday for the North London derby. So we'll be doing a live stream. We'll all be watching the match and discussing with everybody, all our fans, all our subscribers. Remember to tune in and give us your comments and everything. We'll be doing a live stream watch along of that. But let's go to Terry first. Um, give us your prediction for the North London derby, Terry. Well, uh, you know, uh, big Spurs supporter. However, it's going to be a tough, tough game. Be a really tough game. Um, one one draw. Okay, Cam. Three two to Tottenham. It will be a tough game. There will be goals. Um, I think that we are scoring a lot more freely, but we are also conceding, and they seem to be get suddenly finding their scoring boots. So three two, I'd hope. Uh, Jam. Uh, well, I feel like we've been scoring four goals a lot recently. I'm going for four one Tottenham. Um, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hope that's right. very positive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really do have that. From my point of view, I think it's going to be 2-1 to Tottenham. I think we can't stop them scoring. Aubameyang, etc. will score. But I think we've got enough to score two goals to get the win there. I'm really hoping that we do win. Because I think this is a pivotal match for us. Mm -hmm. If we can be, win the North London derby, Cam will probably do the stats, but it'll probably be the first time we've done the double of them for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. And it sets up really nicely for the next round of the Europa League and the, and the league game. So really, really important match, I think. So... We really need to make sure we win it. Now, before we go, I just wanted to tell our Croatian fans that we're going to be hopefully providing Croatian subtitles for this video in the in the coming days. And I wanted to give a shout out to some of the people who very kindly, you know, provided comments on our preview uh, for the Dinamo match. So I think Cam has already mentioned a few people, but we've got Tomislav Habulan, Zuti Lumen, Antonio Arfazdan, The Realist did a really good comment. Thank you, The Realist. Uh, Victor Dravenka, Maestro Damir Sumanovic. Thank you guys for all your comments and watching our videos. Really subscribe to our channel. We'll be doing a lot more content and we'd really like to no, keep the conversation going with you. And, uh, don't forget, Harry Cam, did you want to say something before we yeah, close? Don't forget Jim Morrison, who rose from the grave to make a comment and tell me I didn't know much about Croatian football. Oh, Jim Morrison. I, did, I missed Jim Morrison. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, okay, guys. Thanks for all our fans or Spurs9501 YouTube channel, all our podcast listeners. Thank you very much for tuning in again. As I said, we're four passionate fans giving you our view, post-match analysis, whether you agree, disagree, leave your comments in there. Like, comment, and subscribe, and keep watching our show. So it's goodbye from Ray in London, Terry. Goodbye from Terry in Vermont, where we don't take paved roads for granted. <laughs> <laughs> Jam uh, from Cold, Connecticut. It's getting warmer here. You guys have a have a good one. And Ke for last but not least, Cam, a Croatian football expert. Yep, and it's still sunny in Florida. So <laughs> goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. Come on, Come on you Spurs. Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. You've been listening to the Spurs 9501 podcast. Stay in touch, continue the debate, and let us know what you want to discuss by finding us on YouTube. Tune in after the next match day for more insight. Thanks for listening. <laughs>